are you TV freaks? I can't, we're in a room full of people that love TV as much as I do, and it makes me very, very happy. Thank you guys for coming out today. We're excited to, to do our live podcast. Our very first live podcast. I mean, I'm Stacey Orsano. I played Mindy Collette Riggins. And I'm Derek Phillips, and I played Billy Ross. <laughs> So normally on our show, what Derek and I do, we watch an episode and then we talk about the episode. But today we said, rules be damned. No more rules. Free for all. Gotta get crazy. It's whatever the hell we want. So we also decided to bring some friends along with us. And you probably know them as Tyra Collette and Buddy Garrity, but we know them as Adrian Palicki and Brad Lelands. Come on out, guys. (laughs) As Brad stumbles onto the stage. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> hey, so guys. Y'all? Hi. We're going to ask me. them a couple questions, and then we, we have on. a couple yeah. of trivia questions for you guys. And then start thinking now. Questions you want to ask us? Nothing's off the table here, guys. Stacy and, and I got index cards today. I wanted to feel like we were real look how, interviewers. Look how professional we are right now. I wanted, to, I wanted to do that thing where you smack them on your knee like this. Yeah, and when we're done with one, we're going to David gonna Letterman toss them. Yeah. Derek did that about 50 times in the green room. Hey, guess what I can do? Look yeah. at that. Look I'm at very this. excited about this. I'm getting to live my uh, earn, uh, inner Merv Griffin. You, know, you ever seen anybody do this? Yes. I'm excited about it. All right, our first question. So we're finally back in Austin, Texas together. Uh, this is the first time in a while. Um, so in all the years that you've been here, what sticks out as your favorite moment from coming to the ATX television? Bradley? You know, to, my favorite moment, I, maybe it was the first time it, when it first started. Yeah. And we did the out, outdoor uh, drive-in. Yeah. And we were all in the parking lot, yeah. And it, was, that, it, was that like halfway through FNL, or was it the end, end, end of FNL? I don't remember. If I'm not mistaken, but, it was the final season of Friday Night Light. Yeah. I believe. And so it was, you know, there was maybe 100 people there in the parking lot, and now there's thousands of people and thousands of shows. And Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, who made this happen, and thank you for having us. <laughs> just, just the fact that we're back here at my... Favorite, I'm not even being hyperbolic, my favorite weekend of the entire year is this ATX festival and Emily and Caitlin and everything that they do. I, it's my absolute favorite time of year. Yeah. These gals are amazing. My first time actually at the festival was the 10 year reunion. I didn't oh, know. Oh, yeah, that. when we were on the field. When we were on the field. Yeah. yeah. And that was, I mean, obviously, I fell in love with everybody and everything. And um, since then, I get to see these guys every year, which makes me happy. Kind of. Don't hit my index card hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was a pleasant night on the field, the original Dillon Field. That we had thousands of people there, and it was about 106 degrees. It so, was hot. Uh, right. So n- naturally, Buddy was not sweating. <laughs> <laughs> was, I do remember. I do remember that being a very hot evening. It was oh my, fun. Oh my gosh! Yeah. It's I authentic. still drive by there. Like, really? I, yeah, I go pick up people at the airport, and I just go sit in front of the Panther Field, and like. I do the same. Still on there. I do the same thing with the landing strip. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Definitely still there. Just drive by and I'm like, I used to work in you. Thanks for the fajita buffet. <laughs> I'm not kidding. The other night we were driving home and Stacy said, "You guys want to go by the landing strip?" And I'm like, "Not a chance." And she, well, I would. <laughs> Maybe we wouldn't even hours. use the restroom. Remember that? We would go shoot in there and we'd be like. I'm not touching anything in this place. It was so we did, disgusting. We, we did a lot of Windex on the poles before there was dancing. It's sad. It's sad so. to go to the field now because it's you know it's weeds and you can't even see it. It's just like the buildings are falling down. Yeah. People come by from other places. Oh, this is where they shot Friday Night. Uh, <laughs> a they long do that? time ago. <laughs> and that panther blue on the on the field house has turned to like a light powder blue with sun damage. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's nostalgia, but it's also, yeah. Yeah, it's bittersweet. It's, like, yeah. it's bittersweet. That's pretty good memories, though. We got some pretty good memories. Best memories of my life. Aw. Okay, we're going to keep with our TV theme. I want to know what you, what was your favorite binge that happened during the pandemic? What TV show did you find? <sighs> Ozark. Ozark, for Ozark. sure. Um, yeah, Better Call Saul. Um, and my new favorite is Barry. 
Barry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Barry's seen that. hilarious. Obsessed. Plus, Stephen Root, you know, that guy's the greatest actor on the planet. He's done every role, you know, in everything forever. He's wonderful. I love watching that guy. I was telling Brad in the green room, the season, I don't want to, it's not a spoiler, but season two and Barry, when he, the whole episode is just him doing the fight with the little girl. It's like the best episode of TV I've ever seen. <laughs> Insane. Oh, oh me. me. Yeah. Uh, the boys. Dude. Yes! Love, 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 love. Derek's love. obsessed. I'm obsessed. So Stacy wanted to go to the landing strip the other night, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I was like, guys, the premiere of the boys is tonight. I want to go home and watch the boys. And oddly enough, we were leaving the Stephen F. Austin uh, two days ago, and as we were walking outside, Nick Wexler, who's here, I don't know if he's actually at the moment, but is at the festival. Mm -hmm. I was walking outside, and there were a couple paparazzi guys there and some autograph hounds, and one of them wanted me to sign an autograph, thinking that I was Nick because I've got this awesome mustache. Right did, you sign, did you sign it's it, It's called Nick? a porn no. stash. That's what no. it's called. Listen, if that, if that happens, I'll usually just sign like whoever you think I am. It's just like like a, like an Olsen sister or something, and I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> it, was, it was definitely a compliment because Nick is a good-looking dude, so I'll take it. It's but good. you were saying you watch the boys. What else? I talked over you because I'm a jackass. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. Yes, I love TV, but I definitely watched every Hallmark movie that's known to man. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good pandemic. Feel good. That and a lot like, of murder. A lot, lot of murder. of lot of the murder, ID channel. Murder, ghost, ghost hunt, mm -hmm. haunted shows. Mm -hmm. Can I ask exactly. you a question? Why is it that all the women I know are like into these murder mystery, like who we, done it? We know how to bury a body. Listen, but also, <laughs> but also remember we that like, we like to watch true crime. So, like, if that happens to us, we know how to get out of it. Do you think you could get away with murder? One hundred percent, I could absolutely get away with murder. I know about like not leaving any hair or or like DNA. fingernails of mm -hmm. DNA. This I podcast could super... is going off track, but I do want to ask another question. <laughs> no, I could super murder See, Derek I don't Phillips, think you and could nobody actually, would know. I don't think anybody can get away with murder. <laughs> what is what is the one mistake they always make. DNA. DNA. Or uh -huh. they want to go back and talk about it and be a part of it. Ah. It's always they talk about it. That's the thing. They, they tell their you friend tell. or they say something. Listen, when Annie and I finally murdered Derek, we're not going to tell anybody. Nope. You guys didn't hear that from us. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't forget we Yellowstone. We're never here. Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Brad, bring it Sorry. back, Brad. Bring it I back. Okay. It. I love it. I don't care. Speaking of dead bodies, there are a lot of dead bodies in Yellowstone. Okay, I have no, one more TV yes. question. Um, is yeah. there, I, do, I always wonder if there's a movie, that, a movie, a TV show that you sat down and watched as a family, like either now or when you were a kid. Ours was um, Life Goes On, My Little Brother Has Down Syndrome, and we got to watch the, our family on TV every night, so we would watch it every week. Plus, you guys, Patty the Poem, so it was like... Heaven, what would be like a show that you would watch together? I feel like all the shows I watched when I was a kid, like the main characters have gotten me too at this point. So it's like really, <laughs> sorry. Like, we would sit down and watch Cosby show. We would yes. watch, you know, Wonder Years. And you're like, okay. Um. <laughs> it's sad, but it's true. I know, right? Do you guys have one, Brad, that you watch together as a family? Oh, yeah. Leave it to Beaver. Um, <laughs> Um, Gunsmoke. Yeah. Um, wonderful world of Disney. Um, shoot, everything. Yeah. I yeah. mean, we watched every show. Right? That's what you did. We, yeah. my, my brother and I only got a half an hour of TV a day, and he was older, and he would steal my half hour. So I have spent the rest of my life making up for lost time. <laughs> I love TV. And also, I will tell you, I can trace back most of like the things I would need to talk to my therapist about through TV. My trust issues came from when they switched on, on Vivs on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and I am fully claustrophobic from when Cherry was stuck inside a refrigerator on Punky Brewster. Like, all of my issues stem from TV. This all makes sense. I know. I tell <laughs> all kind and now you're an actress. That took me. See, I, I mean, I don't have fond memories, unfortunately. Like, <laughs> I have memories of like my older brother and I watching like different strokes. Oh no, don't do it. <laughs> and like slowly sticking his spit riddled finger in my ear and me just watching it, knowing that if I reacted to it, he was just gonna keep going. Oh god. Yeah. So anyway. So what was so what was <laughs> your great question? So what was your question? <laughs> All right, uh, what TV show are you guys loving at the moment or watching at the moment? I know we already talked about the ones that you binged, but is there anything that's on right this yeah. moment? Well, I, I recently binged Ted Lasso. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. 
My best gal it. friend had been telling me about it forever. Roy yeah. Kent and for life. <laughs> yes, and I freaking love that show. Oh, me too. I watched it in two days, I want to say both yeah. seasons. It's one of those shows, uh, Ted Lasso, that I watched, and then I made my dad watch it when I got down uh, to Miami over Christmas. And then my cousin and I were in Vegas together. He lives in Vegas. And I literally made my cousin watch it. So I've, no, I've watched it all the way through like times with like four different people. I have a good buddy, Steve Walters, who's out here. He's also the- Also our producer. Our producer on our podcast. He was also on Friday Night Lights, guys. Yes, and on Friday Night Lights, he played- yeah. we'll Steve, where are you? I'm back here in the back. <laughs> Just <laughs> circling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Steve, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it, don't that's worry. That's the guy that kissed Tammy Taylor. You mean, that's Glenn <laughs> yeah. the mouth rapist, guys. He, he'll, be, he'll be a part of this in a minute. <laughs> but Steve Steve was like a diehard, and still is, a fan of The Wire. Like, loves da, die The Wire. Die hard. You know I've never seen The Wire. Oh, Steve. Don't tell well, Michael B. Jordan that. And don't tell Steve that. Steve, yeah, Michael B. Jordan was a, a huge part of The Wire. Losing my index cards. <laughs> <laughs> that's because you're not knocking I told you, Stacey, yeah. this is too much, the index cards. No, you got it knock, remember? This knock is how him. you keep them. All right. Yep. So, but Steve would watch The Wire, and he'd be like, dude, you got to watch The Wire. But he would make you watch The Wire like this. And, yeah. <laughs> watch you to get, and also be like, wait, 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 this part, that, that this part that's coming up is going to be amazing. Watch. He would watch you watch The Wire, wait, and then he would go, okay, <laughs> this guy's not important right now, but he will be important remember in the second him. season. I think, Steve. <laughs> How do you know that? And he goes, because I've watched the show. And I said, don't you think that maybe when I watch the show, I'll also know that this is going to be an important guy? And he's like, yeah, but just let me know. So just this, this, the, like, an- the anxiety of uh, this. Do you like it? Do you like the show? Stop. Is it amazing? Stop it. <laughs> it reminds okay. me of my brother sticking his finger in my... I'm d- definitely yeah. going to give you wet willies from now on. Yes. <laughs> okay, in Friday Night Lights, Derek and I are just now making it to season four. Three, and season three is when, as a cast, we finally figured out that we were picked up, and we were picked up for three seasons. I'm wondering how you guys found out that we had a little job security, and what that did to change you. Did we, or was it like, did we get picked up for two and three? Because it was direct TV, we went second season. We got picked up for seasons three, four, and five. All ah, at once. that's from nice. direct TV. From gotcha. direct TV. But do you remember who told you, or how you found out about it? I was just shocked we were still in the air. Yes. 100%. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Every episode, we were threatened to be shut down. Yeah. And DirecTV actually came in and saved us. And it was yeah. one of the kind of the first streaming um, yeah. channels. Yeah. And they decided to split the cost with NBC. And that was the reason that we stayed on the air. We never would have survived like 10 years later. No. But I remember Palicki being such a positive person at that point. He I was, hated it. He was so negative. I was so negative. negative. I'd be sitting outside my trailer and I'm like, <laughs> smoking a cigarette angrily and being like, hey, here, like our numbers were terrible last night. It's like, why are you dwelling on this? Everything sucks and we're going to get canceled. And you know what's I'm like, funny? you're acting and you're an actor. Like, that's the hardest thing in the world to do. And we're having fun. He's like, shut Whatever. up. Whatever. <laughs> shut it, Palicki. You know, those terrible numbers in those days, you know, our numbers were terrible because we only had 8 million viewers yeah. and they wanted 13 million. We so, die for 8 yeah. million now. I mean, 8 million people. right now is pretty dead gum good. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. When, did you, when did you find out? Yeah, I don't know, middle of the night or something. Yeah. Kyle called me and said, <laughs> let's That's go, let's go called Derek. Too. I remember specifically, because I thought we were done done, and Kyle <laughs> called me, and he's like, we're back. And I'm like, what? And he's like, and we got season four and five, and I'm like, got it. I had no clue. Yeah. I, I've said that this on makes the podcast. That family but... happy, too. Daddy's got a job for three years? Right. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I said this on the podcast, but Annie called me, and she just goes, Dun, 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 dun. And I was like, are you getting married? And she goes, no, but you are. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, to who? And she goes, just wait. <laughs> <laughs> and it was this guy. Yeah. <laughs> we, we always talk about what we love about our characters. And I want to know what was the most challenging part of playing Tyra or playing Buddy Garrity? God, but kissing all those really attractive men, that was really hard for me. <laughs> I would imagine that was rough. <laughs> well, you know, I, the hardest thing for me was, you know, once Pam left and went to California with that tree hugger. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, so then for the rest of the entire series, Buddy never even had a date. Well, that's because you dated our I mean, 
mother. Think that no woman. That's that, right. You well, did it. Oh, yeah, you yeah, we did. We had, with our mother. we had a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that that went away too. And that was awesome. And then that went away. You and and I asked the writers. I would ask the writers and the producers, say, "Hey, is Buddy ever going to have? Is Pam ever going to come back? Or is he ever going to get back with Tyra's mother? Or you know, is he ever? You know, no, you're going to pay for this until the end of the series." <laughs> Yeah. He's a spinster just over there in the corner, <laughs> knitting but, scarves. But, take, but taking in strays into his apartment, Santiago. And yes. We've also figured out that there is nobody that Buddy Garrity won't let work at Garrity Motors. <laughs> this is true. Literally. Everybody gets a job there. Everybody got a job at Garrity Motors <laughs> at some point in time during the show. You down on your luck? Here's a job at Buddy Garrity. Don't have any experience? Come on over here. And that's how you sell a lot of cars in Dillon, baby. <laughs> yep, there's two places to work. Applebee's. And your dealership. And Buddy yes. Garrity Motors. Yep. Or the landing strip. It's or fine. The right. Yeah. There's that one. It's fine, guys. We never actually talked about this, but there is a line that uh, Stacy's character, Mindy, has in the show where she talks about Buddy Garrity being the number one customer at the landing you strip. You were my number one customer at the landing strip. And then uh, you dated my mother. It's so incestuous. <laughs> You know, I fought that. <laughs> For two reasons. Three reasons. I had been married for 40 years at the time, and I had two young daughters, and I despised strip clubs. Yeah. Completely. So you're serious. <laughs> I'm like, I want more. Tell, let's talk about this. You should be an actor. No, you're actually, good. you go in when you're 18, you know, your first one, and you, you know, and then it's not that much fun anymore. It's really not. I don't know how you stay sort of. there. It's, I guess it's fun when you're making money. I don't know. It's not fun when you're spending it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah. This, this, is our, this is our last question for our people up here, and then we're going to throw it back to you guys and ask you some questions. When you guys think back about the entirety of the show, what was the proudest moment? Tyra going to college. <laughs> that was it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. Kadem's called me and he goes, Annie, I don't know what to do because I don't want to lose you on the show, but I really think that Tyra should go to college. But what do you think? And I, was, I said the same thing. I'm like, I don't want to leave the show, but Tyra has to go. To she has yes. to. And I was at Whole Foods a few years ago, right down the street, and this uh, teenager comes up to me, and she goes, Ira Colette. And I go, yes, I did. She goes, you're the reason I went to college. And it made everything worth it, and I still remember that moment. You're gonna make me cry. I did, when she told <laughs> me that story the first time, time I did. Well, I, I, uh, mine crosses over a little bit into real life because um, there's a scene early on where Buddy's extremely drunk at this at the party at the pool party, and and it's where Riggins and Lila pick me up out of the mud and take me home because he's a disgusting drunk person. And and what was interesting about that was that my both of my daughters uh, were part of the uh, the crowd, uh, the pool kids, and and they were very young. My, and my oldest daughter was about. I think she was about 12 or 13 at the time. And so they saw that scene. We did that scene many times. And uh, lots of costume changes. I had to change out of the muddy ones. And, and, and we kept doing it over and over again. And I, I think it, what I say is that this is personal as well as something to do with, with acting the role. And that was that after we, after we wrapped and I got all cleaned up and everything was fine and we're hanging out and my daughters came over to, uh, to talk to me after having watched the scene and being part of the party and everything and and my oldest uh, daughter came up to me and she looked up at me and she goes daddy are you really drunk <laughs> and it was cool because it was like I tricked her <laughs> you're like wait a minute I'm an amazing actor <laughs> good for you That's I want to know yours oh my favorite moment uh, proudest moment on the show is definitely um, th that last shot on, on the show. It's Taylor Kitsch and I sitting there <clears throat> on that house. Uh, and for, for you guys, I don't know if you knew what we were looking at. Like, it looks like we're looking out at the sun setting. But <clears throat> really and truly what was going on is I'm looking out 
And there's every single person who worked on this show. Every was, cast and I mean, crew member including, was there. Like people came, like Scott yeah. Porter showed up. Yeah. I mean, people and came Annie in. Annie was out of town. Annie was already done. Or, or, no, I was there. The I was episode. in episode, That's right, yeah. that's right, that's right. Pete, but Peter Berg and all, Berg like David there. Nevins, everybody. Yeah, and all these people that for the last five years of my life had been my family. And that was the last scene that we shot on Friday Night Lights and all of our cast and all of our crew was there. And I look over to Tim and I say, Texas forever. And he says, Texas forever. And we both look out at this field. I'm looking out at this field, trying not to cry in the moment because Billy wouldn't be crying. But sitting there looking out at the crowd and these people for my family for five years. This was going to be, but also being so proud that I got to have this moment, that I got to be in this final moment. I mean, really and truly a beautiful bookend to this wonderful experience of being on the show that changed my life. In full circle, when Pete Berg started the show and you guys in the pilot and what he was doing, and he was like, take this forward, take this with you, take this with you. He walked over, um, Andy and I were standing next to each other. I was sobbing. And Pete just came over and he like wiped the tears away from my face and he goes, Stace, take this with you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I try to, like in every job that I do. Yeah. And you know, it was the most have. special we job. Have. I mean, it really yeah. was. I like leaving third season. I remember I drove back to Los Angeles by myself because I was like, I need to have this decompression moment. But it felt like I graduated high school and all my friends were still like sophomores. And it was just this oh, thing yeah. like I was leaving my my whole family. And it was just this, I mean, and then and then reliving it actually again at the end of the yeah. show. It was just sitting there going, God, this was special. And I have yet to experience a job. Then that and and still to this day, all of us love each other. We're all still tremendous friends. And and what we had, uh, you know, we probably will never get to do that again. I mean, if you get to do it once as an actor in your life, you're lucky. And we we had a special time. And we're all uh, we're all a big family that'll never, you know, it'll always be that way. So that was that was really cool. We're and all we still really like each other. That night, nice. uh, in that twilight when we were all there. And we knew this is the end of it, but it's not the end of it. We knew that. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Oh, that gave me chills a little bit. I love that. I remember that night, though. I, I remember going back. We went back to Peterburg's hotel room, uh, and there was a big group of us. Uh, and I remember you and I were sitting on this balcony, and you were like, so how do you feel? Because you'd already been out. It was, like, it was, literally. like You were like the, the kid who graduated two years before the rest of us, and you'd been out there in the world after this, this wonderful experience. Uh, and you were working on another show at this point in time. But it was, you know, it was scared of what the future was going to be. Am I going to work again? Uh, will I be able to work in a capacity like this again? And I don't know that that's ever happened. Um, you know, this was such a special job. And special on so many different levels. Special because of all of you guys. But special because it was also my first big job. You know, so um, it was, you know, trepidation, fear, excitement. Ready to go out there, ready to see what was next. But you know, uh, I've, it was comforting also knowing that you had already been out there ahead of us and had kind of, you know, yeah. <laughs> and lied to you and said, "Oh, it's great it's out be there. Great Don't out worry, there. It's everything's so gonna easy. be like this show." <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And you go to you go to a new show and there's their fans of F and L and and you go there and you know it's the crew and you're about ready to start and the director and the people go oh and by the way we want to do we want to shoot it just like y'all did Friday Night Lights we're gonna we're gonna do what y'all did okay okay then why are we rehearsing why uh, is there a mark what what is this thing that That's I have to stand on we why, did why, it why, why are these lines why do I have to do these lines so, you know. What are you talking about continuity? Yeah. My, guys, my, I, have, I have super sappy proudest moments, but if I'm being incredibly honest with you, my proudest moment is on Parks and Recreation when Amy Poehler called our family trash. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know that happened, but that's cool. Yes. She goes, she, she and Rashida Jones, Rashida Jones loves Tim Riggins, and Amy's character loves Saracen, and they get in a fight, and then finally Amy pulled, she was talking about the Riggins, and she goes, that family's trash! Yeah. <laughs> that's like, that's, that's me! Yeah. Or the Amy Schumer spoof for Friday yes. Night Lights. The wine, the wine just keeps getting, getting bigger, bigger and bigger, and she's Tammy Taylor. She's Tammy Taylor, and she's got a wine glass, and it just keeps bigger. getting bigger every and bigger. Every scene until scene. it's like this that big. Was, yes. That was good. <laughs> Okay, you ready for your questions? Okay, we're gonna th throw out some trivia questions. Raise your hand. We have a mic to go to the people, yeah? 
Are you okay, ready? Yes. This one, this first one, I'm not gonna lie. We're gonna start a little hard, and it's gonna involve a little bit of math. <laughs> oh no. What are the Jersey numbers of Riggins Street, Smash, and Saracen? And I would also like them in numerical order. <laughs> Does Riggins, anyone know? Riggins Street, Smash, Saracen. Is this on? Okay, here we go. What's the answer? Okay, uh, you're asking a non-math major, but. Street is six. Riggins, of course I'm going to know it. He's, I'm Canadian. He's 33. <laughs> I forget the rest because I'm old. That's it. That's pretty good. Cool. <laughs> D- does she win? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, I, th- I thank you for playing. <laughs> Do I have to say the numbers individually? Yeah. Well, Riggins is 33. Street is... Oh, wait, wait, no. Saracen is seven. Yeah. What were the other two? <laughs> uh... Smash and oh, Smash was 20. And Street. And Street was... Oh, six. Six, yeah. Give the no, no, There we go. <laughs> I just want to I want to point out to the crowd that these these uh, these folks are recoiling from me. And I just want you to know I'm not going to give you the Tammy Taylor treatment. I was just kidding. I, I'm safe. I actually already have it. Oh, okay. Well, here, then you give it. Give it to a friend. <laughs> all right, next up. Okay, so for all of our podcast listeners out there, uh, who is Stacy's favorite character on Friday Night Lights? Oh. Oh. Hold on, you have to Voodoo stick it into the mic. Tatum. Hold on, here you go. Voodoo Tatum. Voodoo, Voodoo Tatum, that is correct. All right, let's give her a round of Love applause. It. There we go. Uh, here we go. I tried here to find are. a Team Tatum shirt, but they didn't. <laughs> They didn't make them. I'm also not allowed to say the name anymore. Derek has yeah. put a veto on me talking about I'm the character at all. I'm done with it. Okay, you guys, <laughs> what college does Tyra end up going to? Oh, here we go, right here. Oh, oh, in the back, hold on. Hold on, you got to say it into the mic. <laughs> here we go. UT. UT. Correct. Correct. All right, here we go. I'm running you the thing. All right, this Steve's one. He's getting his exercise today. I love it. You guys, this we next still one's have impossible. No idea how, but you know, it's TV, it's fiction, so anyway. This one is going to be super hard. It's impossible. So I'm, I'm looking for the Super Friday Night Lights fan here. What was Tim Riggins' pet dog's name from season five? Y'all, I didn't know this. Okay, there was a so collective like, gasp from Stacey the audience. Stacey said Tim Riggins had a pet dog? Well, I haven't watched the show. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody. I think it was actually Madison's dog, right? And then, yes. or Becky's dog, and then he takes it. I'm gonna do my best, Alex Trebek here. Skeeter, what was Skeeter? We were looking, we were looking for Skeeter. Or as Taylor would say, Skeeter, eh? Okay, guys, another, another hard one, but someone probably knows it. What was the middle name of our first child? Middle name. I'll give you the first name, Stevie. Oh, I see you back oh, in the back. Who's, it, who's got it? Okay, here we go. Ray? No. No. <laughs> Good guess. It's a terrible name. It's Should a I terrible it? name. Think of a Silence of the Lambs character. Yeah. Like the main character. Oh, here we go. Hannibal? Yes, there you go. Stevie Hannibal. That's correct. Hannibal. Hannibal. Can we that? Yes. Stevie. <laughs> Hannibal brings it, and they wouldn't tell us why they decided to name him that. We asked, and they were like, we don't know. We don't Congratulations. know. Congratulations. Wait, there was one more. There's one. Do you have that? I've got one more. And this one, I don't think anyone's going to get, because I didn't know this one at all. Here we go. <clears throat> In 1993, NBC premiered a new drama called Against the Grain, based on Buzz Bissinger's book, Friday Night Lights. It was a very short-lived drama on NBC. Who was the main quarterback on that TV show? Oh, wow. In the oh, back. Oh, oh, here we go. Okay. Who was the quarterback? Ben Affleck. Oh! That's correct. Give her a round of applause. What? <laughs> that was amazing. First jo- Are you going to catch it? I'm going to hit somebody. I didn't know we had that. <laughs> wow. Just wow. Have you met me? <laughs> I do have one more. Does anybody know that... I had no clue real quickly that we had a huge Against the Grain fan here. Hold there on. we go. She's, there we go. She said, That's what? It. 
I'm audio. a huge Ben Affleck fan. I want to find it. I want to find it on YouTube. Congrats. Uh, does anybody remember what movies our wedding vows were from? There are two movies. Because we're really classy. Oh. Yes? Oh. Hold on, I'm coming. That's the one. Mic. That's one. Th this is the most cardio I've had in like seven years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Nemo. Finding Nemo, Nemo. Mine. Finding Nemo and... and just do just if you could say it in a Scottish accent, it would work. I it's okay. The you one. one. Does there was anybody remember? Who had an... Wait, who had the hand up? Oh, no. Okay. Oh, this I... gentleman over here. Hold on. Braveheart. Braveheart. Yes. How about they both get one? But we. I'm going to need Derek to do it in a Scottish accent. I said I love you. I always have. <laughs> and then he looks at Tim and he goes. <laughs> okay, guys, open it up. Let's do some questions. First of all, guys, we have Catherine Willis here with us who played Street's mom. <laughs> Get up on the couch. Also, the guy that's going to come around to you with the microphone, Len, the guidance counselor, is uh, our, our producer, and I'm um, going to come to you. He, he'll be nice to your mouth with a microphone. <laughs> While we have Catherine Willis here, though, I did want to ask Catherine, like, what was your proudest moment of being on Friday Night Lights? Um, for me, the thing that stands out the most when we shot the pilot, Yeah. both the football scene when Jason gets tackled, we shot that over the course of four days, and you guys remember Pete's shooting style of the pilot? It was like a feature film. There were cameras everywhere, and we didn't know if we were on camera or if the cameras were focusing on someone else, so it was like four days of yeah. sobbing. Um, but it, but it, it was incredibly visceral. And then the, like that scene in the hospital where Coach comes and sees Jason for the first time and he head harness, that also... It was one of those moments where the, the given circumstances of the scene just like carry you through it and you, and I just felt like um, I was there and it was moving through me, which is what every actor wants to experience. Yeah. So for me, the, those were the proudest. And I honestly, the, that moment in that scene in particular is the thing that like up until that point, Friday Night Lights was just this show with... And then all of a sudden that moment happened and it was like, we're experiencing something completely and totally different. This is not something that I thought was going to happen. And the way that the show handled the whole street situation, just in general, I, I mean, I don't think we've ever seen anything like that on TV before. He told me the story of why, you know, he yeah. created that character and the network, of course, wanted him to walk again because yes. their network. And he was like, absolutely yeah. not. Because he'd actually witnessed um, when he was getting footage, I, figured, yeah. I believe for the movie. Um, a kid get hurt horribly, yeah. tragically. And right after that, Million Dollar Baby had come out. And he was like so mad at that because, yeah. you know, it was this, it has a horrible ending ultimately. And, yeah. and ultimately about giving up in a way. And he was like, I need a character that this kid can look up to and know he can still survive and he'd still be a badass. But this is, this is his, you know, this is his future. This is what it's going to look like. Yeah. And it was so powerful. And I was like, this is an amazing gift that you are giving the world and this kid. Yeah. And you crushed that scene. You Thank did. You. Oh. Question? First question. All right, here comes the bike. I'm going to need you to run Steve. faster, Steve. <laughs> run. Okay, got to renew my gym membership. Okay. <laughs> so do I after. Austin, we all need to. Um, I've had some crazy fan experiences with you guys, which can't go on the podcast, but I'm wondering what your craziest fan experiences have been Boy. that you're allowed to say on the podcast. Ah, oh, I'm trying to think. Well, the one of, it wasn't necessarily a fan experience, but I found out he was doing a talk at TCU and somebody asked him what he looked at as the greatest writing happening right now. And Stephen Sondheim said Friday Night Lights and I melted. He's my, <laughs> he's my hero. <laughs> I, I had a, a funny, I mean, it's not the greatest one because they're all great. And we continue to see people all the time. And, and I, was in, uh, I was in Paris doing this show and walking down the streets of Paris and these Parisians walk up to me. Oh, Bariarity! I'm like, <laughs> are you kidding me? You guys watch Friday Night? Oh, yeah, my favorite show. I'm like, what? 
<laughs> because the, the idea it, 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 of our show is that it's about community. It doesn't matter what sport it is. It doesn't matter what country it is. If you grew up and you had teachers and you had parents and you had boyfriends and girlfriends and you, even, you didn't even have to play on a sports team, you were on the chess team, whatever it is, people get it. It's because universal. it's about community. It's a universal show about human beings, and it's a drama. And, of course, the French get it. I mean, you, there's a lot of things they don't get, but they get that. <laughs> <clears throat> Just kidding. Oh, my no, God. So, anyway, that was a bizarre one. I apologize to all our French listeners. All right, exactly. <laughs> well, mine would be, I was at a party for, uh, it was an Oscar party, and it was the year that Colin Firth won for King's Speech. And I met him, and he lost his mind because it's his favorite show and he'd actually because he'd done a character where he had to play like a guy from the south or whatever and so he binged Friday Night Lights and it was like literally his favorite show in the world and the entire time at the Astro he's like can I ask you questions about everything I'm like I'm like your biggest fan like what is happening <laughs> this is one of the coolest moments of my entire life I had I had a very similar experience I was doing a uh, uh, recurring guest star on uh, Private Practice and I walked on set, and the director's like, hey, everyone, this is Derek. And, you know, everyone's like, hey, how are you? Uh, and we start reading through the scene. And midway through the scene, Tay Diggs goes, dude, you're Billy Briggins. And I'm like, <laughs> you're Tay Diggs? And he's like, you're Billy Riggins. And I'm like, dude, I saw you in Rent. And he, like, we had this, like, I worked, like, four ep- or three episodes on the show, and Tay was, like, my best friend for, like, the three weeks that I was on there. I haven't talked to him since. Uh, but, but it was like I, this weird thing. T- Kitch and I used to joke occasionally, like we'd be walking back from you know craft services on set, and he'd be like, "Hey, don't screw this show up, or don't screw this scene up. People actually watch this show." But when we were shooting it, it did feel sometimes like it was in this little void. It was just in a us. bubble. We're just putting a on a little play. You know, that's kind of what it felt like. Also, as- crazy fan experience. Really quickly, that has happened to both Derek and I. We'll be out somewhere and someone will come up to us and be like, um, hi, can I, can I get a picture? And we're like, oh, yeah. And we put our arms around them and they're like, I'm a, I, I wanted you to take my picture with my friend. And we're like, oh, you don't know who I am. Fantastic. Yeah, that, that definitely happened one time in front of probably my biggest asshole friend, DJ, who that was about 15 years ago. And he probably once every three weeks. At least, at least once every three yeah. weeks. Remember that time? You remember you remember you that douche. time you tried to get a picture You're with that girl? And douche. she looked at like you like you were the biggest creep in the world. Do you remember? Do you remember? Yeah, I remember that, DJ. I get what I get most of the time is people will say, You look so familiar. We're from the same hometown, right? Yeah. Or you're friends with my older brother, right? And I'm like, we no. went to high school together, right? Which no. high school did you go to? We did. Yeah. But I will say, like, the thing that comes to mind recently is last week I was walking in a parking garage and a guy turns around and he's like, Mrs. Street! And I was like, oh my God, yes. <laughs> because, I mean, how many years later is it? Yeah. He was like, Friday Night Lights is still my favorite show. It's still my comfort watch. I was just watching it yesterday. I can't believe I just saw you. And I was like, oh my God, you just made my day. Thank you so much. So that, you know, and the fact that you're all here um, yeah, what's we did wrong make with it you in guys? A <laughs> like, why are you, you here? You know, it's a beautiful thing. We appreciate you as much as you appreciate us. Yeah. No, listen, y'all are the reason that we stayed on the air. Yes. Literally. Like, yeah. they yeah, were, were we going to cancel the three us. Seasons. Yeah. Save the and, lights. Yep, save we the lights. We talk about that on the podcast as well. That if it weren't for you guys sending all these light bulbs to NBC. And football. They were ending up shattered in, you know, boxes. Nick, please stop sending us light bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else have another question? Oh, we got a couple. There you go. All right. Oh, oh. sorry. Hi. We'll, get, oh, okay. we'll get to you. Um, uh, I was wondering, aside from like the filming locations, like Panther Field and all that, what's your favorite spot in Austin? Okay, we always do Gueros. Yeah. That's but a good. You go-to. live here now, so you probably have different places. ATX Casino is my favorite restaurant in town. Yeah. Love. But my favorite place in Austin is the lake. I love walking town lake. It's like, that's my, that's where I ground myself. If I'm having a bad day or whatever, it's the thing that makes me joyful. I remember going out on Lake Austin back in the day, Kitch got a boat. And so we were, you know, we were always like joking with the crew, like, hey, hurry up with this scene. We got to get out of the lake. By the way, that's the way they talk with each other. No. Yeah. He's like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> 
really just like, talk in but grunting like, noises. They, they, un- they understand that language, uh, but we hear uh. So Kitch and I are out on the lake one day, literally on the boat, and this massive, gigantic houseboat is like coming right towards us. And there's this dude standing up there going, hey man, hey, what are you, and I go, Kitch, is that Brad? And sure enough, <laughs> Brad is on this houseboat. He goes, hey, what are you guys doing? What are you, hey, slow down, slow down. And we pull up next week. Hey, man, what are you guys doing? I'm like, Brad, what are you doing? He's like, I tried to call you. Maybe you didn't hear it. All. I'm like, I got this awesome houseboat, man. You guys got to come. You got to come get on this houseboat, man. We get out there. I'm like, where the hell did you get this thing from? It was gigantic. How? Do you remember this? Of course. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's TV money, baby. <laughs> That's not season two no, money. By the way, that's I, I the best impression I've ever heard well my parents. Friends. Um, you know, my boat was actually smaller than the one they're in. But no, we're, I got a friend that has a really special boat. <laughs> <laughs> but there were just moments like that always in Austin with Brad. You'd be walking home from the bar one night at like 2 o'clock in the morning. You'd get, hey, man, what's going on? You need a ride? <laughs> Connie Kyle and hey, I would Brad. be sitting at this bio, and all of a sudden he's like, hey, guys. What's going on? And you'd be like sitting at the bar. And you're like, yeah. She mentioned it. That's a place that we went when for, for for one of our first dinners. And I still go there all the time. It's great food. Best bios. Anything on South Congress. Plus, we all sort of lived on South Congress. Yeah. So Before you know, it our, was our, what it club, is our club was the Continental Club. Yeah. I mean, we didn't go there to see a band. We went there every night to see every band. Yeah. So that, was, then, pretty, that Dana, was pretty cool. And Dana, the, the woman that played her mom, Dana Willa Nicholson, started singing there like every Thursday, and we would go hear her sing. It was ridiculous. But guys, they also thank you for that question because we definitely needed Derek to do his Betty Garrity impression. <laughs> it's so good. It would be it's remiss. So good. If... Brad's going to beat me up after the show. Yep. And, uh, he yeah. said it's gotten better. A little bit. We'll see. <laughs> I was looking over at Brad to make sure he wasn't getting angry. I know you had a question. Uh, yeah, here you go. Here's the mic. You kind of already did it, but okay. um, this is inspired by uh, our chat yesterday with Annie. I would like you to do your best uh, Taylor Kitsch. Oh, t- Kitsch is just, as Stacy said, it's a lot of guttural. A lot of what? What? Hey. Real deep voice. What? Hey. What do you want? And every it, time it, I call him, I swear to God, every time I call him, he answers and goes... What? <laughs> and I go, dude, I haven't talked to you in two months. He's like, yeah, what do you want? What do you want? Dirk, what are you talking about, eh? Yeah. What do you want? And there's like a smile. You can feel the smile through the phone. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of that. That's what they sound like. It's a lot of that. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. These are great podcast noises. We've got another question here. What? <laughs> I got you. What's your question? <laughs> so you're officially podcasters now. I don't want to assume how much you guys are in podcasts, but is there a show in this theme that there's a few podcasts that do this now? People from the show go back and rewatch it and things they weren't on, and then they recap and talk about it. Is there a show you'd want to hear? Well, I was like obsessed with West Wing Weekly. Yeah. West Wing is my favorite show in the whole world. <laughs> And they, they, they started it. Like, they were really the first ones to be, like, of a cast members, or with Josh being a cast member, a person in the show, to do a rewatch of a show. And now, like, every TV show has a rewatch podcast with actors. We're not, it's like a commodity. Well, I will say that when Stacy and Steve, well, Steve is the one who approached me about doing the podcast, because Steve's been in the podcast field for a while. Uh, but Stacy was like, I said, Stacy, I don't know. About podcasts. I don't really listen to podcasts. And she said, just listen to West Wing Weekly. And when I listen to West Wing Le- Weekly, it, it, I mean, I'd be lying if I said I didn't steal from them in some respects because I was we like, totally oh, I, now I understand what the format is. I get what the idea is and, and the concept behind it is. And so, because at first I was like, I don't they don't want to just listen to me talk. I don't know. No, and we didn't this. want it to no. be like gossip and like no, here's some no, stuff no. you didn't know that happened on behind the scenes. It's yeah. like a love letter to you and to us essentially. They don't need to know that I want. hooked up with so many women. It was just. <sighs> no, I, I didn't. Listen. listen, the inside baseball stuff, keep doing it. It's yeah. the best part. Thank Anytime you. you explain something you think we might know, like for people who aren't actors, it's this. All of it. Keep and that it. came it's from Steve specifically because I have a tendency to just run through stuff. And so thank you to Steve. But... Any other questions? Oh, I'm going to come to you and then we'll come to you. Okay, here you go. Um, this is a question for Adrian. Um, I'm 
okay that you ended up with Riggins because I love Riggins, but I kind of was shipping you in Landry. Um, do you have any like special favorite experiences of working with Jesse Plemons? Hey, remember that time we killed a guy? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and, and Kadams would agree that was jumping the shark for sure. It was that was like a network thing. They were like, we want to spice it up. We need ratings. And I, I also love like mid season. You just completely forgot that we killed a guy. But Jesse and I talked about it. Like, even though no matter how we got there, the fact that kind of brought the characters together was awesome because these characters would never have probably gotten together. Um, and every moment working with Jesse was epic. He's such a fantastic actor, and for such a hard storyline, I don't think could have pulled it off with anyone else, you know, anyone else. So every moment with him was special. I will say that Stacy and I, Stacey and I just finished the second season of the show, so we obviously had to talk about the murder situation. But I want to, I want you guys to know, in rewatching it. There is never a moment with you and Jesse where it's not believable, where you guys do not crush the scenes that you're in. And even though we as fans of the show may not love that storyline, it has absolutely nothing to do with you guys yeah. as actors. I mean, I remember wa just going back through and watching it because I haven't watched the second season in 12, 13 years maybe. Yeah, since we shot it. I never went back, partially because I wasn't in it most of it. Uh, I was like, why would I want to watch that? Uh, but going back and rewatching it, it was like, wow, you guys are taking some really, really, really difficult material and crushing the hell out of it. So I just wanted to say kudos to you guys on that. Thank you for that. I have a, Je okay. I have a Jesse story, really quick. I'll just really quick. Um, year one at Austin Film Festival, Reiner, Minka Kelly, and Jesse were part of a panel. Mm -hmm. And I remember, and Jesse was pretty young. I think he was. 18 when we started, yeah. I believe. So I remember somebody asked him about he, how he deconstructed character. And he was, I knew he was brilliant, but hearing his passion and dedication, just remember thinking, this guy's going to go really, really far. Yeah. He's an old soul. We, it's really beautiful to see like how things have worked out and what beautiful work. And he was just nominated for his first Oscar. Like There's a lot of celebration in seeing him do so well. Yeah. Yep, this next our episode that comes out on Tuesday, Jesse's our guest, and it was just seeing his face and getting to talk to him. And he's a dad now, and like, oh my God. Oh, he's like all grown up. He's yeah. so grown up. <laughs> but he's still Jesse. Like, there's yeah. not an totally. ego to that guy yeah. at, all. at all. He's just yeah, so happy to be doing what he's doing and being a family man. I do, however, think his first nomination should have been for Game Night, but that is okay. Yes! <laughs> yes! I, I, think that's why, I think they, that's why they gave him this one. <laughs> I, I, I really do. And, and a little side note there, I was just shooting an HBO series with Jesse here, and when they announced that he, I, I got to be sitting right in front of him in rehearsal when they announced that he got the uh, nomination for the Oscar. So it was really special, because I, you know, I met him when he was 18 years old and watching this, and then but they announced Kirsten as well, so. That's, and then it's Jesse cool. who's like, like oh, okay, thanks, guys. <laughs> that, humble, that's humble cool. man. That's cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs> also, not, not for nothing, but if you go back and watch the slap heard around the world, the look on Jesse's face is priceless. <laughs> <laughs> it's priceless. You had a question? Uh, if you could have been any other character, that of yours, which one would it be and why? If I could have met? Played. 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 Oh. Tammy Taylor. Tammy Taylor. Do I really need to say any more than that? <laughs> By far, my favorite character in the whole show. I auditioned for Tammy, and thank God I didn't get her because Connie... No, I'm just saying the way Connie was meant to play that role, and she and Kyle were meant to have that relationship and portray that couple, and Connie was such an advocate for Tammy. It was beautiful. It was really... I learned a lot by watching the conversation she would have and... Um, how she really took ownership. I mean, we are all empowered to take ownership of our roles, but... Well, she and Kyle really deconstructed every episode and really kind of created those conversations. But I also think it's hilarious that Pete Berg wanted Dwight Yoakam to play 
Kyle's character. Yeah. Could you imagine, imagine what that show would have been? Imagine. How different the show would be? I oh mean, thank God. God for Linda Lowy. It was like, no, you need to see this guy. Who's Maybe the you didn't director. see him on Grey's Anatomy when he was the sexiest bomb squad ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which we were all sitting at the Four oh, Seasons when we were doing the pilot watching him Jesus. explode. Do you know what I think I would love? I, I, I think I'd love to play a smash, like a role like that. I could, I'm so quirky and bubbly and sound like a 12 year old and like I will never get to play somebody with like that kind of confidence and like bravitas. I would want to get, I want that. <laughs> I also say Gaius is like one of the best actors in the world because he could not be further from the character that he plays. We have said we think that the, the one that's the most different from his character is Gaius. Yeah, he's like, phenomenal. From life to character. He's a phenomenal actor. I actually started laughing the scene where I'm like having the burger, right? And, and in the in the pilot or whatever, okay. which he was like, just take a bite of the burger. I'm like, okay. But anyway, when he starts talking is like, you know, smack, whatever. I started laughing genuinely because I was like, what is happening? That yeah. is not Gaius. This is not Obviously you. it's not Gaius. But How like, are you able to laugh with all those necklaces around your neck in the pilot? <laughs> My Mr. T necklaces? The Mr. T's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think, I mean, I, I loved Billy, but Tim was cool. Like, I think I would like to be Tim Riggins. Like, Tim Riggins, you know, he was, he was cool. He got great material. Billy's walking around in banana hammocks. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Billy always just added this, like, lovely element to He was the, something. He was something. <laughs> and then y'all got together, and that was a whole lot of something. <laughs> yes. Oh, yep. Yeah, a lot of dancing. I think I would like, um, I'd like to be Grandma Saracen. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Grandma Saracen. Not really. No, I'd like to be Buddy, Buddy Jr. <laughs> Bud Light. Bud Light. Bud yeah. Light. We called him Bud Light. Bud Light. <laughs> oh, who wouldn't want to be coach? I mean, come on. Yeah. Well, you just sit there and look at Buddy like this. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Yeah. Have you seen the, the cut? It's just a super cut of coach going, Let me tell you something. I'm going to talk to you about that. Let me tell you something. And it's like 15 minutes long. <laughs> It's amazing. I think we'll take one more question and then we'll uh, call it. All right, here you go. Hey, so I was just wondering if any of y'all took anything from the set um, once y'all were done wrapping. Yes, very much so. I took all of the framed pictures from the Riggins house. So it was, and they were random pictures. Like we had wedding pictures. I did have a picture of Tim Riggins in his, in his jersey, like his football picture. You guys know Mae Whitman from Parenthood. She's the huge Friday Night Lights fan, but a huge Tim Riggins fan. So actually at the festival one year when we were doing a reading, I gave her that actual picture with the frame. She cried. She did I, cry, it was I amazing. Saw, I, but there's yeah. also another framed picture that's just Taylor Kitsch on like, a riverbed putting a sock on <laughs> and I still have it weird I uh, I don't know if you guys remember there was like a St. Pauli girl type thing in the in the Riggins brothers house like a full body uh, Ooh, like, a, like a beer ad girl yeah beer ad girl and for whatever reason when we were done with the show I was like we have Nan Bernstein our producer was like you can take one thing, what do you want? And I said, I want the St. Pauli girl. And I still have her. Uh, she's in the closet. Yeah, she's in the closet now. But there was a point in time where I had a spare bedroom that was completely and totally empty. Uh, and I just had her up in the corner. I had a self-tape audition for something. So I had a tripod set up with a camera. And then Steve was in town one time. And I didn't have a bed in that room. So I just blew up an air mattress. And there was a girl that I came home with one night from a bar. And we walked down the hallway. And she goes what are you doing there? And I was like, <laughs> don't worry about it. And that's exactly, I said, don't worry about Close it. Close the door really slowly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Get. <laughs> oh, I took, so Tyra had the best boots. And so I took all the boots. <laughs> Funny enough, Tyra had the trashiest clothing, but I had the most expensive wardrobe of anybody on the show. <laughs> That's amazing. I know. I know. Derek one time was talking about some, they would be, do like a rolling rack to yours and mine's trailer, and it was just a rainbow of bras and like leopard bras yeah, it was and a different jewelry. colored bras. It was so much jewelry. <laughs> it was a whole rack of bras that was just brightly like... Brightly colored bras. Brightly colored, but also animal skins. <laughs> yeah. Like oh, every I kept those. animal skin, kept those. leopard and zebra and like every... And just, and I'm like, oh, those Colette what sisters. What is going on here? <laughs> those Colettes. Just out hunting 
different kinds of exotic animals to make their, their bras. <laughs> uh, remember that big black brand new Suburban? I took it. And, Stop, are you being serious? And I got about halfway back to Dallas and the highway patrol pulled me over and I had to bring it back. You're like, I'm, don't you know who I am? I'm Buddy Gary. Are you serious? Of course not. <laughs> when is Buddy serious? Get, get out. No, we took surprised. a lot of swag. We took a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, they gave us a lot of things. We didn't take, like, whatever. But, yeah, we got rings and shirts and hats and coats and every bit of Under Armour in the world. Because we were the first big sponsor for Under Armour. Um, and so now look, now look at them. I was, yeah. I was too afraid of getting fired. I didn't take anything. But you I go to Scott Porter's house... You go to Scott Porter's house in L.A., and he, he's like, oh, yeah, come into my office. And you go into his office, and it's like a Friday night shrine. How are he's you got gonna... state championship rings and wheelchairs. And you, like... w- you wait till the last day on set, and you steal. You're not going to get fired. The show's over. Yeah. <laughs> Hindsight's 2020. You know, one cool thing that they did let us have, they let us have some serious helmets, the real helmets. And we got a lot of the actors to sign them. And then we would take those helmets and go to uh, different charity events. And a couple of a couple of those helmets brought five thousand dollars, you know, just for a football helmet that was signed by the actors. So a lot of good came out of that those things. Yeah. You you didn't steal anything? Well, I was a guest starring, recurring, not even guest starring. I was a recurring role. So when you have a recurring role, you're not under contract. You don't know if you're coming back week to week. I didn't know that my last episode was my last episode. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, so, so if I would have known. Moral of that story is take stuff shit. every day you work. Every time, <laughs> every episode. I tried take to steal things. a hat from props one time, and it was in props for whatever reason. But I tried to steal a hat, and they followed me to my car. Wow. They were like, "Do you have that hat?" And I was like, "No." Yeah. <laughs> we counted them, and I go, "Fine." <laughs> Can I get one, though? I mean, I've been on the show for five years. Can I get a friggin' hat? No. <laughs> I think that's it for us. That's our time for this podcast. Our very first live podcast. Thank you guys for showing up. Y'all are awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Yeah, we do want to let you know if you want to support us, there are two ways that you can do it. We have a brand new YouTube channel that we're going to put episodes up on every Tuesday, so you can subscribe to that. Or become a paid member on Patreon for 10 bucks a month. You'll get access to extended, ad-free episodes and exclusive bonus content. Okay, guys, then we this have to end it. You know how we have to end this. We're going to need your help for this one, so. Clear eyes. Full hearts. Can't move. Thank you guys for coming out.